May the 2nd. Last lesson of the chapter, and unfortunately, in this chapter, it ends with something tough. We, we like the chapters that end with something nice and easy, but this has got a little toughness to it. But, okay, let me not exaggerate. There's one little moment here where it's like, what did you do there? And I'll try and explain it carefully, okay? Learning goal. Sketch a, or graph a quadratic relation that is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. If you know what I'm talking about, you're like, no, we can already do that. Well, what are you worried about here? I'm like, oh, oh, watch. One little thing goes wrong here. I'm going to use symmetry to try and accomplish this. What are you talking about? I don't know. That's the problem with learning goals. Maybe they should be at the end of the lesson. You know, Here's what you just learned today. Yeah? We'll get back to it. In order to determine the maximum or minimum of a quadratic relation, you need to find the blank. Ooh, I brought my Star Wars stickers today. Where are they? A free Star Wars sticker for anyone who can give the fancy word that's the answer to the question. And if you say, what's Star Wars? Then I will send you to the vice principal's office. I've never watched a Star Wars movie. Okay, but you know what Star Wars is. Do you know what Star Wars is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anyone know the answer to the question? To get the maximum or minimum, what word, what, what, what attribute of the parabola do we want? The vertex. Why are you making a big deal about that? I don't know, because I taught grade 11 last semester, and when they got there, they sort of forgot that was the important detail about a parabola for max min. Uh, ooh, what do you like here? General Grievous? Darth Vader? Grievous, yeah. There's another really good Grievous one somewhere. Because then I cut the sticker out, then he can decide where he'd like to put it. Well, uh, you know what? I got to be the teacher, so I don't get to do fun, ridiculous stuff like that. I'm supposed to act like an adult. You might be like, I've seen no evidence of that so far, this adultness you talk about. There you go. Vertex. Now you're paying attention, right? Get a Star Wars sticker. So, if a quadratic relation is given in vertex form, you can find the vertex as follows. This is not supposed to be the hard part. This is supposed to be the yes, I remember that. Find the zeros. Then use that to find the x axis symmetry. I've been calling that the x value of the vertex. And then sub that in to get the y value of the vertex. Hopefully we beat you to death with that, where you're rolling your eyes at me. You're like, yes. Uh, in theory, I know what to do there. So if a quadratic relation is in standard form, you can find the vertex by first factoring and then doing this. You're like, what are you worried about, Mr. Todd? Why are you stressed about this lesson? Because uh, of this word here. What if it doesn't factor? Because maybe that question's been looming all along. It's like, so everything in the universe factors? No. We've just been giving you lots of ones that do factor. This isn't your stuff, is it? I'll move it for you. And thank you for this. And I'll move this to the back. So that is what I'm worried about. Ben, was your stuff, was that your stuff there? Okay, sorry, we just moved it. What if it doesn't factor? That's the question of the day. What if it doesn't factor? Well, if it- Please, Bowman, please come to the main office. Please, Bowman, to the main office, please. I've actually got plenty of strategies if it doesn't factor to show you between now and the end of grade 11. There are plenty of things we can do. For now, I've got one trick up my sleeve, and it's actually pretty nice what's going to happen, but conceptually, it'll be a little hard to see. However, if a quadratic relation in standard form cannot be factored, you can find the vertex through symmetry. Symmetry is the word. And then there's a set of instructions there, but you know me. I'd rather just do it and not confuse you. And then we'll come back to the instructions and see if they make sense. So don't let me miss it. After I do the steps of this one, example number one, after I do the steps, then I'll go back and see if the instructions are good, okay? For you to look back at and study from. It says, determine the vertex of the quadratic relation, then sketch. Factor! But this time, factor question mark for the first time. Factor question mark. Because now I'm giving parabolas permission to not factor. Review so far, Josh. 
all we've done is, what if it doesn't factor? That's all I've done. I sp spoke for 10 minutes to say, what if it doesn't factor? y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. You know what's coming because I did some foreshadowing there for you English students about what was about to happen here. But let's pretend we didn't know. And you went to factor this and you went, okay, AC is 10. Two things that multiply to 10. It could be 1 and 10. Could be 1 and 10. Could be 2 and 5. Neither of those things multiplies to 8. You stand up in protest, gather your books and leave because you're like, nope, I'm out. That's it. I'm all done. Hold on. In red. You, at least in capitals. It doesn't factor. And now for another Star Wars sticker. One little thing that is the key to surviving this disaster. All we can find easily is a phrase there for a Star Wars sticker. You think about it. What can we find though? It doesn't factor, but looking at this equation in standard form, there is something I can get easily. I'm ready with my Star Wars stickers. What can we find easily? The y-intercept, she says. And like the question yesterday, where I was like, well, I can't do what you're asking. All I can do is the y-intercept. It is the key to mathematical. You're refusing a Star Wars sticker? That would hurt my feelings if I had any. Someone called me a robot the other day, so that's why I said that. That filing cabinet's older than you, Mr. Todd. Whoa. Hurts my feelings. I know, just the sticker for you, actually. There it is. I'm not even giving you a choice. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I cut my microphone there? You could tell that story forever. Look what it says. Math, see, she does like it. She says, you didn't need any Star Wars. Uh, you can, all we can find is the y-intercept. I'm not saying this is the greatest math problem-solving strategy in the history of the world to go, well, I can't find what you want, but I could find the y-intercept. Okay, so what is the y-intercept? y-intercept equals Zero five. How did he get the five so fast? What did he do? Maybe he didn't do anything. Maybe he just knows. Do you just know, or did you, did you do something? I pulled off the equation. He just pulled it right off the equation. He knows where to find it. But if he didn't know where to find it, what do we do to find y-intercepts? Yeah, set x equals zero. So I get y equals zero plus zero plus five. Yeah, all that other stuff becomes five. Let me put that on my graph. Now reach down and do up your seat belt for this. This is the only tough part of the lesson. If I get past these next two and a half minutes, you'll be like, okay, that wasn't as tough as he said it was going to be. <laughs> I don't know what causes that to do that. Here's my argument. I've already found a point. It wasn't a zero, but I found y equals five. Somewhere else out there, this graph will go through 5 again. And I'm going to find it. And those will be my two points. Here's my plan. Somewhere on here, I don't know where it, I don't know where it is. So I'm going to put this in a different color. I'll put it in blue for now because I don't know what it's actually going to be. And we'll erase it in a minute, okay? Are you with me? This blue number's, I don't know. I'm just guessing. No, I'm not even guessing. I'm just like, well, say it's over here. Say it's like at 8. See that parabola goes through over there at 8. Then I can do halfway between. 
then I can do sub it in. I can do all the stuff. I just need a symmetrical point. We didn't need the x-intercepts. We needed a symmetrical point. That's why I'm saying symmetry. And you go, okay, well, that's fine. How am I going to find that? Big moment here. So I'll keep it in this other color. So sub in y equals 5 into the equation. That's the smartest thing we've done all semester, is to go, oh, I can find the other one. I'll just make y equals 5. You're like, isn't that going to make a difficult equation? It actually doesn't. If we survive here, things are going to be OK, because what's going to happen next is actually pretty easy. That happens in math sometimes. The figuring out what to do is difficult, but then actually doing it turns into be, being not a big problem. So I'll just scroll down a little bit and try to prove myself right. I want to know, when does this thing equal 5? If you're, OK, a scale of 1 to 100, if you're with me, anything over 50, you're like, I kind of see what you're doing, then we are actually in great shape. That's a pretty good. We did pretty good together today if I got you to 50% on this, seeing it the first time. I want to know, when does y equal 5? First move, bring that 5 over. So I get 0 equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5 minus 5, and something that makes me very happy happens. What's plus 5 minus 5? 0. And my factoring just got way easier. So easier, in fact, if I had a sticker that I could put on my page here, I would do it. A little emoticon. Or what are they called? The little smileys you use on your text messages? You can draw one better than me. Draw something on here that's like, oh. Maybe you're not happy yet, but you should be happy when you get here, because this thing factors easily. It factors easily. It factors easily. It factors easily. Does anyone know why this one factors easily? Do you know? What does it do? It, it, this one just has a common factor. It's so easy, it's hard maybe, because you're, you're expecting something really difficult. And when an easy one comes along, it, it confuses you. But I just common factor here. Well, then what do I do? Well, if it's going to equal 0, therefore, the 2x is equal to 0, or the x plus 4 equals 0. Those are the two factors I'm dealing with this time. For the life of me, I can't figure out why it does that. But I'll work on it. By the time you get back here in grade 12, we'll get it figured out. Therefore, watch this. This is the aha moment. Therefore, x equals 0 over 2, x equals 0. You should be, when this happens, like, well, duh, I knew about that. I knew I was going to get x equals 0 because that was the y-intercept. Or the other time we can get y value equal to 5 is if x equals negative 4. And this is what I said. I didn't really know where this was going to be. That was wrong. I just put it up there to think about what was going to go on. I actually found out that there's another time that y equals 5 over here at x equals negative 4. Now let's just stop and savor that for a moment. Try and rewind and think about what we're going to do here, what we were trying to accomplish. We were trying to find the vertex and I just found a major piece to the puzzle. If this was a CSI episode or a Law and Order episode or like some kind of crime show, you'd be like, I just found a thumbprint. Who can give us the instructions to finish this off? If I've got two symmetrical points, they weren't the x-intercepts. We just have to grow up a little bit and go, any two symmetrical points will do. What should I do with these two things to now find the vertex? Halfway between, right? It, we call it finding the axis of symmetry, and that's true, but that's not what I wrote. I wrote, the, therefore, the x value of the vertex will be 0 plus negative 4 over 2. And when I draw that picture, it could be you're like, 
I'm less impressed by your formula all the time, Mr. Todd. This add them together and divide by two. You're just finding out what's halfway between your symmetrical points. And I get x equals negative two. Ooh, xv. I really like that for you. Remind yourself what you're doing. I've got the x value of the vertex now. Long, silent, awkward hesitation. Hoping, hoping that you're like, oh, well, I know what to do now. Where'd my skizzers go? Oh, they're over here. Someone else turns their nose up. Okay, I got Star Wars. I also have Avengers, children. Ooh, Hulk, Thor. Captain America. All the Black Widows are gone. Are they? Hi, Destiny. No sorries. These stickers? No. I might put some stickers on your test after you do them. Is that what you mean? No. Or you can have... You add up. Oh, Math Star, I got Math Rocks. Who knows the answer? That's not the answer I was expecting. But I'm going to give you the Math Star sticker because that's a great idea. I could use the A value and just map this backwards to find that vertex. Yes, I could do that. That's not what we were doing. So I don't want to belittle it. It sounds like I'm like, oh, no, don't do what he says. No, no. I like what he said. What have we been doing, though? Just sub in. Sub in x equals negative 2 into a y equation. And the only reason I wrote into a y equation is to prepare you for the idea, like we did with substitution elimination, there could be some choices here. I don't think there is this time. There's only one good equation to sub into. So to get the y value of the vertex, I go, 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 5, I'm running out of space here, equals 8 minus negative 3. Where does the equation come from? Let me just scroll right to there. Yeah. Anybody got their calculator there to see if Mr. Todd's brain is like, do I get to stay for another year? Do I got it? Did I do, did I do it in my head? 8. Negative, eight. I think it's right. Who's on the calculator? She's so tired, I can't even type it in. My fingers are so tired. Next test. Yeah, it's good. Next test. I'm going to get on about it. You did great listening to me last time. All the units, everybody, yeah, good. Everybody was better on units. Everybody was better on equal signs. Maybe a couple people made one little mistake. But the next, next test, fair warning. The next test. Not the quiz. The next test. Therefore, vertex is, I know what you're thinking. How do you put the quiz and test back to back? I only did that to help you because... There's people away, and then we had the science thing, and negative 2, comma, negative 3. Okay, if confused, all the confusion was right here. Everything outside of that box wasn't that bad. I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad for us. But finding that symmetrical point, if it doesn't factor, yeah, that's trouble. I won't lie. That's trouble to know to do that. Let's go back to my instructions. And I'll come back here. If you still need more time to copy, let's go back to my instructions and see if my instructions were good. Given a quadratic in y equals ax squared plus b, ax squared plus bx plus c, how much back of the first two terms? No. 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 Zero. Sub in for y 
the y-intercept, which is just the c-value. I want to add something to that instruction. I think that's a better description of what's going on. Then common factor the first two terms, set them equal to zero, then find your axis symmetry. All those steps, I think you're going to be okay. So let me just draw a line here and say after that, you'll be okay. Yeah, you'll know what to do after that. I don't think it was too difficult after that. More time here? You more time here? More time here? More time here? I don't got it, Mr. Todd. You better do that again. Yeah, I better do it again. Determine the maximum value for this quadratic relation. Extra bonus sticker. Do you find the mistake in this question? Where's my bonus stickers? I, I had some big ones. Oh, you can have the X-wing. Look at how big that sticker is. If you find the mistake in this question as I'm working, you can have your arm jolt out of your shoulder as you find out what the, what the problem is here. There's a little problem in this little misprint. Anyways, here we go. Um, factor, huh, AC's 87, multiplies to 87, 87's prime. The only two things that multiply to 87 are 1 and 87. Uh, she no factor. She no, she no factor. Yeah, you, you're sad. No factor, no factor. Throw up your pen in disgust. Stock out of the class. I'm done. It doesn't factor, I'm out. What's that? We're not quitters. Someone says, I got a plan. What can we find? But the blank is blank. The y-intercept is 29. See that little piece of information, I just threw that in there a couple of chapters ago. I just said, oh, well, you can get the y-intercept. Now it finally came back to haunt us. I can get the y-intercept. So, Destiny. Uh, say it again. She might have found the mistake here. What? Yeah, she's like, this opens upwards. Maximum value? No. It must be a minimum value. So whoever typed this up, it may have been me, I don't remember, went a little fast there. We'll be more careful on a test. Oh, Destiny likes Star Wars, right? She's, what's that? Do you like Star Wars? No? She can't decide. All right, you get math rocks. <laughs> I was giving out Star Wars stickers and Snaha refused. It's like, nope. Uh, she found the mistake. She no factor. Where'd I put my pen? Did you steal my pen? But the y-intercept is 29. Major breakthrough. This, this question is very dangerous in the test because it's easy to stare at and go, I, I don't know what to do. And then if it's out of like six marks, you're like, six marks? I don't know what to do. Boy, you better get this example. Put a red star in the corner, red highlight. You're like, I don't know what I'm going to get right or wrong in this test, but I'm going to get this thing. But the y-intercept is 29. So in a different color, in capitals. So, set y equals 29. And it looks bad, friends. Oh, does it look bad. You look at this equation, and maybe you freeze. You're like, I don't know what to do. It's actually easier than it looks. The bad news of this question is knowing what to do is difficult. The good news is to actually do it works out nicely. Anybody have any plans about what to do here? Move it over. 
because great things happen here algebraically. What's positive 29 subtract 29? Zero. So I get zero equals 3x squared plus 12x, which looks very difficult to factor, friends, but it is not. It is not. It's a common factor. So easy, it's hard. You're, you've been doing so many tough factoring questions that when you get to a common factor one, you're upset. Then I'm ready. Therefore, 3x equals zero. Or x plus 4 equals zero. x equals zero. No duh, right? x equals zero. Yeah, I already had that. I don't care about that one. That's not what I was looking for. But, or x equals negative 4. I now have two symmetrical points. And your brain is doing this, hopefully. You're like, oh, there was a y-intercept of 29. But then over at negative 4, and weirdly, this example came out to the same thing both times. Over at negative 4, there was another one. Another y value of 29. Two symmetrical points. What do I do with them to find the x value of the vertex? Find that axis of symmetry. The words are axis of symmetry, but what you write is, therefore, x value of the vertex will be 0 plus negative 4 over 2. It's not always negative 4. It's just these two examples worked out that way. x value of the vertex equals negative 2. And then you order a 12-inch turkey sub. So I get y equals, ooh, can I do this one in my head? Someone get ready on their calculator. y value of the vertex. 12, negative 12, 17. Thank you, Aubrey. Aubrey's right with me on the calculator. It's good. Is that a six marks? I did good. I got five of them. Where's the sixth mark? Therefore, as you're walking up to hand your test in on Monday, you're just looking through going, do I got the therefore statements? Yes. Therefore, vertex is negative 2, comma, 17. Ms. Todd, that's the toughest question this semester. Maybe, maybe. Right up there with perpendicular bisector, right? Because you have to plan and do. And it's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous question because it's hard to get part marks if you don't even know what to do. Knowing what to do is right here. That gets the box. That's the tough spot. And when a math question, when the tough spot is the first four lines, they are very dangerous questions. Because you might not get any of the marks for that question. It's an unfair thing about math. I can't even get started. I can't get any part marks if I can't do anything. What's the strategy? I couldn't factor it, so I found what I could find, which is the y-intercept. And then use that as a leverage tool to try and answer the question. You got questions about that? Please tell me. Don't let me away with it. Well, Josh. That, yeah, yeah. Oh, it says find the minimum value. Oh, I didn't finish it. Five and a half, Mr. Todd. Half mark off. Therefore, the destiny says minimum, not maximum. The minimum value. You know what, I would probably, in this chapter, if you landed that thing and got that tough question all the way through and just forgot to say, oh, the minimum value, but you wrote the vertex instead, I'd probably, yeah, I, I'd, I'd probably let you away with it, I think. If I just asked for the minimum value, if that was the only thing in the question and you didn't say y equals 70, I might not like it, but in the middle of this, I might, I might live with it. I might do a little unhappy dance. You know I'm talking about? This is about my 10-year-old when she says after soccer, she says, can we go for ice cream? And I say no, her whole body. 
does the unhappy dance. It's like, oh, your whole body does this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you still do it to your parents. You get all upset in your whole body. That, that's me marking like, oh, okay, it's, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah? <laughs> Why am I on about these therefore statements? Because your grade 11 teacher, if it's not me, might, might be on about therefore statements. And then you're going to lose marks like, Mr. Todd didn't care. And then, but then you should blame me, not your grade 11 teacher. But now we're getting on, like the semester's getting later. It's time to get our form fixed up. Darn gravity. I will help. No, no, I got it. No, don't strain yourself. I got it. Questions there? Ms. Todd, I think I'm starting to get it. Can we do one more? Maybe something with a word problem, something a little more difficult. One last time. How are we doing on time? Period 2, 11, 20, 12, 15. Oh, we're in great shape. Period you just started off. We just, it literally just started. 15 minutes in. Here, a real world question. This is close to real world. Look at it. Negative 5 future physics people. Where are they? Took physics next year? Negative 5 is the number on Earth. This rocket was on Earth. It's actually negative 4.9, but we'll use negative 5. A model rocket is launched in a fireworks display. Its path can be modeled by this equation. It's on Earth, so negative 5. Its initial velocity is 40, and its initial height is 2. You don't need to know all that yet, but I'm just telling you, this is, this is the equation. This, this, this is what they use to figure out how far the home runs go at the, at the uh, Blue Jays game. Its path can be modeled by, okay, where h is height in meters after two seconds. Determine the maximum height the rocket will reach. Maximum was correct this time. Yeah? Factor? Factor? This is you on this test. Factor, come on, factor, come on. Please, factor. Factor. Uh, AC, negative 10. Two numbers that multiply to negative 10. And add to 40. I don't know. Let's, uh, uh, negative 2. Oh, no, positive and negative. Oh, maybe. 2 and 12? No. 3 and 13? Oh, close, but it doesn't do it. But, but, we know, we know the blank is blank. The y-intercept. I will mark it right if you write y-intercept here. Would it be wrong to say h-intercept? H-intercept. We're not there yet. Yes? But uh, yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. I'm just dipping my toe in the water of that going, maybe moving forward, we're going to have to call this the h-intercept. Yes? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah? But anyways. Therefore, the h intercept is 2. I can see it there. If you need to, you can sub in t equals 0 and solve it out, but it's 2. So, so, yeah, set h equal 2. So I get this, which looks bad. It's bad. Oh, it's so bad. 2 equal, look at this complicated equation, negative 5t squared plus 40t plus 2. This is the equation you use to get out of chores tonight. One of your parents says, can you empty the dishwasher, please? You're like, you know I want to. You know I'd love to help you. But look at this equation i got to deal with. Look at this mess. Meanwhile, you know, you know. It's not bad. One little thing's got to happen, and it's going to get better. What's the little thing? Move the 2 over, so you get... Negative, no, 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 no. Zero equals negative 5t squared plus 40t plus 2 minus 2. And what's positive 2? Subtract 2. Zero. And what you're left with is not too bad. A pretty easy equation to solve. What kind of factoring is involved here? Common factor, take the negative with you. And now, I, this example, I can finally explain why taking the negative with you makes this question easier. Take that negative out front, because then what's in the bracket is easy to look at. Mr. Todd, did you harass about negative all last chapter, just to make the brackets easier to look at? Absolutely. 
Yes, now the brackets are easier to look at. In fact, I don't even need that extra step. Therefore, t equals 0 or t equals 8. I can see right there. I can just look at it, and I can see what the two t values have to be. The rest is not easy, but repetitive. Now I find the t value of the vertex. Then what do I do with the t value of the vertex? Sub it in, sub it in. Sub t equals 4 into h. I get h equals negative 5 times 4 squared plus 40 times 4 plus 2, 82. Aubrey? 82. Am I ready for the therefore statement? I did a bad job on the last one. When I get to the end, I'm like, okay, what do they want? They want the vertex, the max value. I want the x value, the vertex, what are they asking for? Determine the max height, therefore the max height is 82 camels, wagon wheels, meters. I'll be looking for that too on the upcoming test that you're so excited about, I can tell. Absolute excitement about this test. But tell me your questions. I'm not asking, acting like that's easy. In fact, I've nominated it as if you're having a playoff of the toughest questions of the year, this makes the semifinal, I think. And not because any of those steps are hard, but because of this. No, she no factor. What am I going to do? Yeah, and if you don't know what to do, well, I've got the box of Kleenex there for you. So on the test, six mark question, oh no. And then you can cry in the Kleenex, not on your test, because it smudges your work. So don't smudge your other questions when you're boohooing about this one. That's not funny, Mr. Todd. I might actually cry on this test. No, no, you won't if you make sure you study this question. Okay. I might get everything else in the test wrong. But I'm getting that one, folks. That one I'm going to get. I'll look for it. As soon as he hands me the test, I'm like, where is it? You jerk, where did you put it? There it is. She no factor. Me, fi me fix. Yeah, no problem. Question. Would this same system work if the equation factored? It still works if the equation factors. So true. It might even be faster. What if I use that? Good. You can totally use it on any question mm -hmm. unless I specifically ask for the zeros. Yeah. You know, unless I specifically ask for something else. Yeah? yeah? You might like it better. Like bang, bang, bang. I don't even have to factor at all. Well, you do. But you've, you've restricted yourself to common factoring, which is nice. Do you have questions?